So we saw in the last video uh, some of the different reasons for planning for a more dense, uh, more density in the, in the region. This video is going to go through some of the, the terms that you often hear uh, when, he, when talking about density so that we have a common vocabulary from which to proceed. There are several common measures of density that you'll hear quite often. You'll hear about FAR, or floor area ratio. You'll hear about dwelling units per acre. And you'll hear about net versus gross density. There also needs to be some consideration of height versus density and different types of housing and different scales. These two images show neighborhoods with similar densities. 11.7 dwelling units per acre on the top versus 12.3 dwelling units per acre below, but very different designs. Floor area ratio is often used for commercial and office development, but can be used for residential development in either standalone residential or in mixed use design. Floor area ratio regulates the total amount of development, the floor area, uh, but not the, layout, not the layout of buildings or their arrangement on the site. This diagram shows the same floor area ratio in three different configurations of building. Dwelling units per acre regulates the number of units on a site, but not their arrangement or the total quantity of development. Larger houses or larger units will mean more development more floor area at the same dwelling units per acre. Again, these two images show the same dwelling units per acre, but a different form. When we talk about density, there's two different measures, uh, two different definitions, net versus gross. Net density includes only the specific land being measured. Res residential or commercial, and excludes the streets, public spaces, and other land uses around. Gross density, on the other hand, includes the entire land area, including streets, public spaces, and other land uses. So if we, if we were regulating density based on gross density, we would have fewer dwelling units in the same overall land area uh, than if we were regulating only net density. Most zoning definitions are targeted towards net density and not gross density. Density can come in many different forms, heights, and scales. The same, the same number of dwelling units per acre can have modern contemporary design, can have more traditional historic design. Um, and really, it's, it's it's those, those design aspects and not the, the raw numbers that are important when considering how to proceed with density. We can think about different types of housing and how they match up with different types of scales. Going from single family, which tend to run between 1 and 12 dwelling units per acre, to row houses or attached townhouses. Going from 8 to 30 dwelling units per acre low rise, mid rise, all the way up to high rise. In, this present, in these presentations, in this toolkit, we're focused on residential densities, but it's important to understand how these densities are translated into these different types of buildings. There's often a lot of overlap in what types of buildings may exist at different ranges of density. In preparing this toolkit, we've looked at some of the, the neighborhoods throughout the region and how they regulate density today. You can, you can see that there are different approaches. Some communities choose to regulate the floor area ratio. Some choose to regulate height, whether by the absolute height limit or the number of stories. Some communities have a mix. This toolkit will also delve into the different design considerations of different housing types in a later section.
I think we stop there.